Hello, my astrology friends. This is Lada from astrolada.com. And today I'm here with the beautiful and extremely bright, intelligent Radi from Bulgaria, who is going to talk to us about synastry, how to compare two charts and to see if two people are compatible, the good, the hard side. So she will lead us through all the steps she takes as an astrologer who is very versed actually. She's the best at synastry, at relationships. That's her favorite topic. And she will share with us her method. So hello, Radi. Hi, Lada. Here we are again, speaking about love. <laughs> You're amazing. Last time you made the video about love, you had, what, two, three hundred orders? <laughs> <laughs> It was crazy indeed. It was crazy, but it was so satisfying. I mean, I, I just I love talking to people about love and about their relationships. And um, the feedback that I got was, um, oh, my God, you are you are explaining things the way they exactly are, the way we talk to each other with our partners. So um, I know it doesn't sound very humble, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love it. And I think I'm really good at it. So um, it's brilliant. Again, and also because you're a teacher to kids, you know how to explain things very simply as well, without too much like <laughs> astrological lingo. And, and that's what people want. <laughs> so yeah, I, I really hope. Yeah. <laughs> so you have I'm, I'm hoping that uh, I will uh, manage to now. Uh, give like practical advice and steps on how to compare charts so that we know what we can expect from a relationship and what we can expect from um, communication and engagement with another person. Wonderful. And by the way, Radi is offering uh, her relationship reading, which she'll use the same methods for you for $150 instead of 200, which is her normal price. So if you're interested, <laughs> you can check her services as well. So I'm excited, Radi. <laughs> uh, well, last time we talked about um, how things can get difficult, <laughs> basically, when we are talking about synastry and when things um, get um, difficult with hard aspects to planets that are um, heavier planets, uh, slower planets. Uh, but today I really want to go through some things that are very basic and everybody can do if they just read a little bit about the planets and get the idea of um, the energy that they bring. Um, and then we're going to use some simple like simple methods uh, like if a planet is in a hard aspect this might mean a conflict and if a planet is in a positive aspect sorry i have a fidget here <laughs> fidget toy <laughs> um it's uh, it should flow easily i mean the energy should be um easy and this is just a basic understanding of how we compare charts and how we see um, the relationship and the energy of the relationship between people. Um, and I'm specifically going to talk about uh, love relationships. Uh, but of course, to go in depth, you have to understand more of the signs, you have to understand more of the planets and um, the actual natal chart of each individual. So this is the first rule when talking about synastry, and this is what we have to start with. Always look at the separate chart of each person and see what they want, how do they live, <laughs> who are they, basically. Uh, and speaking of love, we take a look at the sun, the moon. Of course, these are super important because the sun is the way we are, the way we express ourselves um what we need and where we are heading to and the moon is the emotions but also the way we take care of ourselves and the way we take care of others and it's also about what we need what we need to feel secure what we need to feel taken care of 
Um, of course, we take a look at Mars for um, the sexual energy. We take a look at Venus, uh, the planet of love, and what we like and how we like to flirt and how we like to be flirted with, how we like to be shown love. Um, and then we take a look at uh, the fifth house of um, happiness, of flirting, of love uh, and joy. And we take a look at the seventh house and their rulers. If you're not into astrology, if you're brand new into astrology, uh, the rulers of the houses mean the planets that rule the, the sign that the house is in. This might sound complicated i don't know but hopefully you will go in depth and uh, find out more about astrology because it's a lovely tool to understand yourself and to understand others <laughs> and um i think that um, there's no person on earth that is not interested in love and relationships so <laughs> uh, this is always <laughs> topic number one that um, pops up when speaking about astrology um so yeah we take a look at these things sorry about that <coughs> what is your cup like <laughs> it's right <coughs> it's fruit <coughs> <coughs> sorry i have hay fever oh. <laughs> i'm just going to mute myself for a while oh it's the allergy season guys with jupiter entered pisces we made the video that allergies will increase a lot this year and next year while Jupiter is in Pisces uh, with, the, with uh, Neptune there as well, because these are the planets of allergies, Pisces, Neptune there. So I hope, Radhi, don't worry, Radhi. <laughs> okay, I survived this one. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, um, it's, it's hard with the hay fever. Um, yeah, it's for it. It says, uh, when you say one thing, but you mean your mother. <laughs> um, yeah, this, uh, this is typical. <laughs> All right, so back to the synastry. We look at the chart uh, for each of the partners to see who wants what from the other. And if the other one wants kind of the same things or at least half of them, <laughs> if possible. Because um, we know that um, opposites attract, but uh, really uh, from all the, all the things that have been um, researched, um, as far as I know, it's uh, good to have something like 65% similarity and the rest should be different so you don't get bored with each other <laughs> um, so it's best to have a lot of mutual um, ideas needs and um, aims in life so when you have when they're too similar there is no attraction so much actually you're more like best friends when everything is too similar when it's uh, like a lot of trines on there or similar it's it's uh, you can get along swimmingly, but it's not gonna the spark, this creative spark that pushes you out of your comfort zone to try to be better through the relationship. So I just wanted to mention. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and even if they if they decide, even if they are similar and they decide that they want to get together as a, in a relationship, uh, they might feel bored at some point, or they might feel like the other one they might take the other person for, for granted which also can kill the uh, yeah the yeah. energy what if there's like 65 percent differences then <laughs> like. <laughs> well as i said i mean opposites really attract when you put together two charts or even if you don't know how to do that you just look at the two charts and let's say one has a son in scorpio and the other has uh, his son in taurus straight away there is a mutual attraction because really Scorpio and then Taurus because these are the opposite signs um, they they feel like they have found their other half mm -hmm. especially if a person hasn't worked with themselves um, like 
to understand um, his pros and cons. Uh, they, they have this feeling that they have found something that's theirs, but they cannot express it or they cannot understand it and realize it. So they find it in the other person. Um, and I have been in such relationship where our moons and our suns were uh, on the opposite sides. And it was a really, really strong connection, but then the clash is also <laughs> humongous <laughs> because at some point, uh, I mean, there's a lot of passion, but at the same time, there is like, I know that I know I'm attracted to you, but you are at the same time, you're totally different to me. You're the total opposite. Mm -hmm. And um, I think Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt have that. His ascendant is Sagittarius and she has many planets in Gemini, while he has a stellium in Capricorn and she has uh, ascendant Venus, Saturn in uh, Cancer. So they had a lot of opposites or so a lot of chemistry and attraction, but at the end. And they, I think they had some Mars and Pluto hard aspects as well. Mm -hmm. So this is also very, um, attractive well, oh and explosive <laughs> <laughs> and explosive at the end yes and yeah i mean you can go through such relationships and you can work but you have to work together uh you have to work together to find the the middle uh, ground uh, because um, otherwise everybody's pulling towards their side and it's just mm -hmm. not working <laughs> at the end it's just a, a big sorry it's a lot about compromise yeah 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 um so yeah this is what happens when there's a lot of differences it's very interesting it's very passionate um but uh, there there's a lot of work to be done if you want to be in such relationship um so yeah we take we take the two charts and we put them together after we have taken a look at each chart separately and um we see how planets interact between these two and as i said in the beginning uh, if you are not if you're new to astrology the easiest thing is just to first to start off with reading about the energies of the planets so you can have a vision and understanding about which planet brings what kind of energy and then basically when you see red and green lines <laughs> if there if there is a square for example which is usually uh, represented by a red um a red color in the in the nato chart uh so if between the charts there are a lot of red uh combinations it means that there will be a lot of traction and there might be again depending on the people if there are more of people who are more, I don't know, fixed, like um, from the fixed signs, Leo, Aquarius, Taurus and Scorpio, these are fixed signs. And if they have a lot of fixed energy, um, they, they won't like the clash, they won't like the friction, they won't like the dynamics. Uh, and the squares, for example, between charts, between planets in the charts, um, suggest that there has to be a lot of energy and dynamic between these two people and mm, mm. fixed people won't like it too much <laughs> they don't, don't like going change. out of there they okay. don't want to change um and um they change but really hard mm -hmm. and it just takes a lot of stress <laughs> um if you uh, for example they are um, they are possible I wouldn't say that, for example, if Mars and Venus are in a square, I think that this would keep their love life interesting and exciting. So I wouldn't count it as a hard aspect necessarily, even though there might be some um, arguments on where and how <laughs> to have sex. But uh, in general, it will be, it will be always... Um, a topic that's always active, which is something that we want in a stable relationship. Mm -hmm. um, so um, also it would be good if we have the suns and the moons in a nice connection, for example, a sextile or a trine or a conjunction. Um, also one thing that um, 
I think is important is to look at the, the suns and see what kind of, for example, if you're talking about a partnership between a man and a woman, um, and we have somebody who is um, an Aries and somebody who is a Cancer, um, it's preferable the woman to be a Cancer and the man to be an Aries, because if it's the other way around, it's just going to be war. <laughs> Uh, and do you understand? <laughs> I'm an Aries. Sorry? My husband is a Cancer son. I'm Aries son. Oh, fabulous. <laughs> well, it's not a war, but he's the most sensitive one. And I have to be way more. And I'm, I'm Aries, but I have this gift that I'm very uh, intuitive. So I'm very sensitive. I have the moon in the seventh house. So I'm very sensitive to the needs of my partner. So I never, you know, if, if a proper Aries <laughs> does, like pushy. Come on, do that, nagging, whatever, go, go, go. But And the woman turns into a man, but I have the very receptive moon in the seventh. So uh, I attracted a cancer man, moon, <laughs> moon rules cancer. And I'm very sensitive to his needs. So I never, you know, push with my Aries energy there too much. So it's like, they can be... I you know <laughs> things that I, I, I can't i can't believe i just thought of these the, the <laughs> signs <laughs> so, so i can tell people not to worry because sometimes there can be other influences for example that exactly this is what i was going to say these are some general uh, things that you can consider um especially if you're new to astrology but of course as i mentioned before everything is very complicated and very personal so you have to take a lot of things into consideration in order to understand the actual dynamic of the relationship and um, maybe some things um, taken out of context as i just did with lada and her husband um <laughs> They, they seem impossible or they seem as if it's um, not the best idea. But then when you look into the charts and you see how the dynamics are overall, like see the big picture, uh, then you understand that actually things can work out pretty well. <laughs> it's not easy, kind of like walking on eggshells around cancers. But uh, if you have this sensitivity in you in other areas of your chart you can do it more easily you know so it it depends most other areas is they, <laughs> they don't probably have the patience <laughs> anyway yeah. yes especially if they had their moon in capricorn for example i don't think they would be oh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> we have a venus conjunct moon in leo his venus is in leo my moon is in leo so that's like our strongest connecting aspect. So if it was not that's, for that, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's... Conjunctions are wonderful, I've seen. <laughs> it's really, I mean, this is just pure love uh, at, at its finest. <laughs> really, really nice. It, and it, it, Moon shows how I'm as a wife, and I'm in a little way, and his Venus shows what he likes in women. So I do that. But our moons are square as well, exactly square. Yeah. In Taurus and in <laughs> Leo. So it's like we have a lot of squares. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that keeps the dynamic. Mm. And it it keeps you it keeps you alive. It keeps you alive. I know both Taurus and Leo are lazy. So <laughs> I'm lazy on one sofa, he's lazy on another sofa. <laughs> yeah, that's that's another thing because you can be both lazy and you like nice things, both of you. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> there <is some> similarity. <laughs> so you can basically find the silver lining in every aspect and in every combination uh, as long as you are aware and as long as you're ready to work um, to make it work basically and because you are very aware <laughs> of all the dynamics I don't think it's uh, too hard to, to know what's happening and how to handle it Exactly. Otherwise, I would not have patience, you know, because my husband being, you know, a lot of female signs and I'm also mostly masculine planets, planets in masculine signs. So I'm like, I, I like to push things to get things moving while he takes it easy. He has more feminine energy. And if I was not aware of his astrology, of astrology, I'd get very impatient, for example, and I'd be, uh, you know, nagging him or 
of saying, why are you like that? But I know this is the energy. You can't turn a Taurus into like a go, go, go person or, or cancer into that for that. It's like you, you, you need to be aware. So he takes his time to start things to, and uh, of course, meals and areas. I'm like, oh, it's taking too long. Okay. <laughs> He, he gets there and when he gets there, he does it way better <laughs> than I'll do it, you know. So that, that helps. If you love someone, you know, even in ancient Vedic books, they, they gave like many different reasons of, um, they have different type of system, you know, for compatibility. And they said, even if you have the biggest blemishes and more difficult combinations, if two people really love each other, you should let them be together uh, and they should be together because only love can push you to work on your differences and to uh, over, it will be very challenging relationship, but only love can overcome difficulties. So, you know, we, we start our relationship with extremely, I've never felt such love, he's never felt such love. So it's, uh, that's what's keeping us working on those differences and compromising. So let's, yeah. let's, you never know, it's only God knows how long. <laughs> But, yeah. that, that's one thing that I was actually going to say probably at the end but uh, now that you have mentioned it uh, even if you know astrology even if you are very aware of how things work give love a chance give love a chance because uh, we are not gods um, and we cannot just look at the chart and look at the other chart and put them together and say, oh, no, that's not going to work out at all. He's going to piss me off um, or he's going to cheat on me or blah, blah, blah. I mean, if you feel attracted to somebody and if you feel like he's really, truly attracted to you as well, um, give them a chance because sometimes love is um, very un unpredictable. Not sometimes, always. <laughs> and uh, um, it, it, you don't know where you're going to head towards with, with your emotions and with the other person's emotions. And you cannot judge uh, how things are going to be. As, as much as we want to know the future and as much as we want to control our lives, um, I don't think love is um, possible to control. <laughs> no, I, I think there's something very divine in it. I think uh, you can't force yourself to fall in love. It, it, it's it's like this divine spark. That's why it's ruled by falling in love is ruled by the fifth house. And uh, it's the fifth house is one of the divine houses of divine grace and good karma. And, you know, so uh, the spark is a gift from above. So even if you feel it for a little bit for someone, or it's it's always some deeply um i don't know sacred experience i would say <laughs> i i totally agree with you and um yeah as i said don't don't judge I, you can use astrology and you can use um synastry to compare the charts and to see where there might be difficulties where there might be conflicts coming uh, and think how to resolve them for example um, one aspect that can be quite challenging, for example, is Saturn um, aspecting in a, in a hard way Mercury because one of the people, the Saturn person, might be talking, um, what's the word, like as if he knows more and he knows best and the other one <laughs> just is not experienced. That, that uh, me and my ex-husband, he's Saturn exactly <laughs> opposite my Mercury and and I would feel dumber around him uh, because he, he would kind of interrupt me, he would laugh at my theories, kind of a bit condescending type. And yeah, criticize exactly. me in front of people. And that was, that was one of the biggest issues, yeah. It's, right. it's, really, it's a really difficult aspect because you, you really feel incompetent, un, incompetent and you feel like you are stupid, basically, and, or... Uh, the other person makes you feel this way. I would just shut up. I'm usually very bubbly. When we would go out with friends or whatever, I would not talk. I just didn't. And, and his friends would think I was quite dumb because I never talked, but I just didn't want to be criticized <laughs> in front of them or, or made laughter for my beliefs or for whatever I was saying. So, yeah, that, you know, I said, yeah you're right. That's quite, I never thought of this aspect as well, but 
you're very right yeah <laughs> Um, so yeah, you can you can see, for example, if you are the Saturn person, and if you have a hard aspect towards your uh, partner's Mercury, for example, or Moon, uh, just start observing yourself. Start observing your um, attitude and what you do, and what and start listening to the person. What do they say? What why do they complain about something when they're complaining? Uh, because they might not be feeling comfortable, they might be feeling uh, useless, they might feel like you are distant, cold, um, and hard to, to, to reach, really. So this is, this is why uh, Sinistry is so um, positive in a way that we can see and we can see the uh, the communication between these two charts before uh, we have even started the relationship um, and have this in mind to get ready and to start observing ourselves or start observing the other person or ask him the right question so you can see how is their mindset about certain things um, and then when we have actually went into a relationship because synastry we can use synastry for just it shouldn't be really but yeah we can use it just to see what will happen if we are in a relationship with this person even though we we might have the best synastry and we might never get together there might for some reason not be any attraction because of the timing because of our um, readiness uh, to to fall in love or to be in a relationship or to attract somebody so a good synastry as in like very a lot of positive and supportive aspects doesn't guarantee us a relationship it doesn't but... guarantee you both sides would fall in love as well uh, it's uh, that, that's what i found hard with synastry you can't see if both sides are in love uh what you can see through is usually horary questions have you seen that? You use horror a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what <laughs> I, uh, it's really hard, a bit hard. It it is hard, yeah, indeed. It is hard. But still, um you can you can take a peek <laughs> of what would life be, maybe. <laughs> and if you have a relationship with the person, uh of course you can and if it's still in the early stages, you can take a look and see what's coming as in some some aspects um pop up later on when you actually start living together, when you get to know each other better. Uh because at first it's always amazing and exciting and nobody cares about hardship <laughs> this is how it should be really you shouldn't be worrying about what can go wrong you should enjoy uh the the best part of uh, the new beginnings in the love relationships and then you can take a look and see what might be problematic um and if you stay in this relationship then you can move on to the next step which is um composite chart and this this is a very interesting uh, method where you get the two charts um, and you just have the midpoints of these two charts for example if you have um, I don't know one sun in <clears throat> in Aries and the other one in Cancer yeah. okay. <laughs> <coughs> As I said, there, I, I shouldn't be talking about this. I start coughing. <laughs> I'm sorry. So they would usually meet in the middle. Uh, so the composite chart, the sun will be somewhere uh, in Gemini, in the middle sign between, between them, towards the end of Taurus or the start of Gemini usually. That's what the composite uh, sun is um, you take the sun of one the sun of the other and you calculate the the, the software does it astro.com has that uh, Suna will have it as well yay <laughs> so you can use it like that as well uh, ready <laughs> just a second <laughs> sorry carry on <laughs> sorry about that yeah so so we we meet all the uh, all the planets between these two charts um, on the closer meeting point in the middle, right in the middle. So these are the midpoints. 
Um, and basically, the chart that happens between the midpoints of uh, the two charts is the composite chart, which uh, shows the energy of the the energy of the the couple. It becomes one new being. <laughs> let's say. Um, it is true. It's when two people have lived together for some time, they merge. They start becoming one. And sometimes they yes, and, and when they're together, they, they just act in, in a way that's different to when they're separate. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and it's very important to uh, notice the ascendant. And it's very important to see where the sun and the moon are in this chart, in the composite chart. And the, the houses of the composite chart are a little bit different, as in a way that we are talking about a relationship, we are not talking about a person. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's very also very important to take a look at the planets and see if there are any exact aspects within one degree orb. Because usually when there is an exact aspect between these um, charts, in the composite one, this gives uh, the most, like this is the strongest energy in, in their relationship. For example, if they have Sun and Venus, um, exact conjunction, that's a lovely, um, that's a lovely placement. Uh, but for example, if they have Venus and Uranus, exact <laughs> conjunction, it, <laughs> it might mean that they have, uh, fallen in love uh, from first sight and then their relationship can finish as fast as a blink of an eye uh, and of course depending on how they live uh, if they are if they're both um, if they have fallen in love at work and they're working in a, the hr sphere or in an it company these are all ruled by uranus um, that might mean that they can uh, they can stay for longer and they don't actually need to fall apart <laughs> as a couple uh, but it all depends on the personal situation so it's very important to ask people what is happening in their life how do they live um, so it's um, always best to talk to people and ask questions and not try to be some oracle <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what what if um, Oh, my husband's and mine composite chart, I see we have Sun, Mercury, Venus, and the North Node in the seventh house. Is that it means we're together to to partner <laughs> to learn to be you, you are together to partner. Yes, the first house in the comp <laughs> in the composite chart um is uh, the way you you feel um the relationship, the way you want the relationship to be. Uh, and the seventh house is the way others see you as a couple, uh, the way people see you in public, the way they understand. And when they, when they think of your uh, relationship, uh, this is what pops up. Like you are great partners. You get together uh, really well. You look like a perfect couple. You are very sociable. Um, you are um, also uh, like people who maybe are doing business and so on and so on. Um, the, the seventh, the tenth house, the houses in the composite chart that show how others see us and how the society sees us. Um, of course, the, the tenth house has to do with um, the career path. Um, the probably one of the best places to have the sun, the composite sun, is um, the fifth house, also the seventh house, um, basically the, the, the love houses, the relationship houses. For example, the sun in the sixth house is not probably the most romantic and sexy placement. <laughs> um, but we to work <laughs> on problems <laughs> together. There to, to work and to clean. <laughs> uh, but again, depending on, uh, I mean, they, they might be Virgos, so that's fine with them. If, if they both have a lot of uh, Virgo energy, they might feel comfortable with their sixth house uh, sun. 
and uh, that's fine. Um, the moon is also uh, good to be, let's say, in the fourth house where it usually belongs to, uh, as long as it has um, positive aspects. Because if it's uh, in the fourth house and if it has hard aspects, this can bring a lot of tension, a lot of stress, a lot of um, emotional outbursts. Um, which are usually uh, happening at home. The fourth house in the composite chart also shows how the relationship will end because the fourth house in general shows the end of things and the deepest parts of us. Uh, so we can also look at that for um, information on what we can expect in the future. Um, with with the sun or the moon in the second house, stability and finances and values are very important uh, to the people. Ag again, if we have uh, some hard aspects to, to these placements, there might be conflicts in regards to who wants what or how they deal with finances and um, what, is the, what is the resources that they're using and how they're dealing with them. And, for example, on the other side, if we have the sun in the eighth house, unless <laughs> they are some sort of, I don't know, psychologists or um, maybe a surgeons or um, occult, occultists, um, it's probably a place where they can either share and they can be good at sharing things emotionally and financially, uh, but also there can be um, power struggles as well there, or they can become um, they can become involved in some business, for example, that they become dependent on the finances that they're given, uh, or they might not have their own financial security, and this is why people have to help them, which. There should be, um, if especially if it's um, with nice support from the other planets, uh, there should be always resources that they can use from other people. But if it's hard aspects, there might be some difficulties in regards to uh, money, in regards to sexuality, in regards to <laughs> getting involved with mafia, for example. <laughs> <laughs> some weird things. <laughs> Yeah, some Scorpio things. <laughs> um, in the 11th house, I think it's um, also a very nice position uh, for the sun uh, in the composite chart. Uh, and this would show that the, the partners are great friends as well. And uh, they have the same dreams and they, they also... Uh, have the same ideals about life and what they want to achieve and how they want to live. Um, so it's a it's pretty happy house, I would say. The ninth house as well. They can travel a lot while um, in, if the relationship has the sun in the ninth house, or they can <clears throat> they can learn a lot. Uh, they can both be some sort of academics. Also, the ninth house in the um, in the composite chart suggests uh, the relationship, what are the relationships with their families? And then if we had nice uh, aspects towards the sun there, that's fine. And they would be getting on pretty well if they have hard aspects toward the sun in the ninth house. That means that probably the families are trying to interfere uh, or they're causing problems or just not getting on well. Mm. <laughs> um, what house have I not 12th. mentioned? <laughs> 12th. Sorry? 12th the 12th, yes. The 12th house. So the one that I, I forget is the one that's the most mystical one. Um, and the, probably the hardest to explain. Uh, well, in the 12th house, again, depending on depending on the um, the situation with the aspects and the situation of their lives uh it can be okay for example if they're i think i had 
I had a relationship with, uh, it was actually a long relationship. I have my daughter from this relationship. I, and I think the son was in the 12th house because my um, ex-partner um, uh, was a foreigner. So that's another thing. Uh, and the moon usually represents the female. Um, if there's, if we're talking about the relationship between a female and the male uh, person and the sun represents the uh, the man so um the sun in the 12th house suggests that the man is a foreigner for example or he might be a monk or he might be some spiritual teacher of some sort or an alcoholic or, okay, he can, <laughs> or an alcoholic or an alcoholic of course well, um, have some hidden vices there so yeah and some people might not actually be aware of how they interact between each other and what's happening between each other while they're in this relationship because the 12th house is really um <laughs> it's like you are in some other world um of your own or of the couple so they're quite not aware of themselves they're quite not aware of the other person uh, and everything is just happening. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so usually, uh, probably, it, actually, it's probably one of the worst places to have the sun or the moon mm -hmm. from the composite chart. Uh, and if there are a lot of planets. Oh, oh mm -hmm. what, what was the first about again? In the I, I couldn't, I didn't understand that one. The, the first, first uh, the first house. The first house is uh, how the two people want their relationship to be and how they feel in this relationship. Oh, okay. So, okay, so if you have the sun there or the moon, what is it? Oh, uh, that means that they, they're proud of the relationship, that this is what they have wanted always. This is how they have always um, in, in, imagined the relationship to be and they take it very, like they when they're together they feel like they're whole okay so i think also because it's the first house this relationship will help them both have more confidence or be more kind of fulfill their uh, uh become more of who they're supposed to be like a personality or something yeah or yeah i think that it's it's quite a good position as well quite okay. a good position and the seven houses you care too much what others think about you <laughs> as a relationship <laughs> okay no, I, I think that it's not that you care too much but uh, you are very maybe very obvious to other people mm -hmm. you're very open to other people you show your relationship um, the way it is and um, mm -hmm. you, you, it's like it, they always work together I mean the, the, the axis between yeah the first and the seven so it's a mix somewhere there is the the mm. the reality of the actual relationship between the first and the seventh house what are some of the best uh, ones you've seen combinations in a composite chart uh, well the sun and venus um conjunctions uh, are are always good, especially when they're in a in a positive uh, house as well, like in the fifth house or in the ninth, in the seventh, in the eleventh, tenth also good. Um, they're also when there is where when there are trines towards the the ascendant from the planets, they just feel comfortable and they feel happy to be together even if there are any kind of uh, conflicts in the um, in the chart, if there are supportive aspects towards the ascendant, it's always a good thing. Um, I'm sorry about my cat. Oh, <laughs> good. <laughs> Agree. Um, so yeah, uh, Venus, Sun, Venus, Mars, uh, Moon and Sun being um, in a trine, for example, um, is also a really, really nice uh, thing because there's just harmony everywhere. <laughs> what they want, what they do, how they feel, everything um, goes pretty smooth and stable. 
Saturn is not that bad, to be honest, from what I have noticed. Mm -hmm. um, I'm still thinking about it, but I think it definitely brings longevity to the, to the relationship when it's in conjunction, for example, or if it's a Saturn road composite chart. Mm -hmm. This is always something that can really bring you stability mm -hmm. into the relationship. Mm -hmm. um so yeah uranus uranus makes it <laughs> uranus <laughs> uranus can be quite exhausting for some people i had a client the other day and um she had an aspect with her husband to be <laughs> um and she she kept saying that she's so tired of uh, traveling constantly traveling and i said uh just you you have to choose either you will be tired from traveling or you will be separated <laughs> so <laughs> if, if you stop the, traveling <laughs> that in the you get chart or in the synastry chart there were aspects in both oh okay because you yeah. know composite charts we have sagittarius ascendant with uranus on the same degree on the ascendant it's like, <laughs> <don't care. laughs> so i always feel like we want to want to travel want to travel but we, we cannot with babies and stuff but i relocate him every two three and it's like every year almost for a few months i take him back to europe and <laughs> and then yeah I'm, and and, I'm, and you you there. have it in the synastry don't you we have uranus trines there but towards the moon wasn't oh, it square <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're in a square my uranus opposite his moon sorry so not it's a white one but still it's opposite yeah so i keep moving yeah. opposite his moon and his moon is in taurus he just wants to put ground roots in the ground and just live <laughs> in one place and grow vegetables and fruits and have a beautiful house i'm like okay <laughs> let's go to europe oh i bought the flat here oh i bought the house there <laughs> it's like <laughs> we have to move between two places by the seaside and by my parents so i Look, he gets so tired that he says enough. <laughs> but I get tired too. After four or five months, then I'm like, I can't anymore. So we come here, we we become like hermits for a year, and then and then I get so restless, and I'm like, I start getting depressed, I start getting sad. I, I'm like, I can't live like that anymore. It's like so isolated, and it's like so routine. So again, <laughs> huge adventure <laughs> through the whole of Europe. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like it, it's very sporadic it's not consistent but uh we stay put 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 and then for six months we travel all the time and while we're in bulgaria we visit four or five countries in europe <laughs> so i guess <laughs> stop doing that like you said this will be the end of us because yeah i, I would go crazy if the distance starts i start feeling distance and i guess we have to do that crazy uranian thing <laughs> yeah yeah that's that that should be life for you <laughs> what if you see strong pluto pluto oh um, <laughs> pluto strong pluto well um hmm. uh <clears throat> i have um, it's not a it's not a love relationship but it's um a very strong relationship for with uh, one of my teachers and we have a conjunction, exact conjunction in the synastry between Pluto and Venus, my Pluto and his Venus, exact. And uh, we also have some exact conjunction Pluto in the composite chart. Oh. So it's, it's quite intense, but depending on how you use it, um, it can be very uh, good because you can go in big depth in regards to psychology uh in regards to because um i've been learning psychology and um like okay. other things in in and and our composite chart is um all the planets are in the ninth house so <laughs> it's it's uh really i mean i can go uh, in depth and understand a lot and broaden my mind and uh, also for some reason i can um i can teach him a lot of things as well 
So depending on how you use these aspects, you can actually take great advantage of them. Uh, but Pluto and Venus usually <laughs> are hard. Uh, they're obsessive, they're jealous, uh, controlling. There's love, always, I mean, love, hate, sorry? love, hate relationship. <sighs> yeah. Love, hate relationship. Yeah. And uh, there's a lot of power struggle. It's, it's unbelievable. I mean, even with him, I, I, I see that we are, uh, we always have power struggles and who knows more and who knows what. <laughs> so, uh, but in a love relationship, it gets really sticky sometimes because um, you see that it's not, it's not constructive. Usually it's not constructive. Um, <laughs> and it, it, it is destructive and at the taking your phones all the time <laughs> yeah <laughs> and at the same time you can't let go it's something that has basically swollen you and you are there and like oh, absorbed and obsessed unless you both are very much into personal transformation and you can yeah. <laughs> do some you know deep <laughs> work psychologically discuss very deep topics as well yeah, and exactly. willing to make changes there, there need to be permanent and, and not like superficial transformation to the relationship oh let's go to europe and come back like permanent deep psychological transformations that usually don't even involve like traveling or anything it involves you changing yourself on a profound level and very few people a willing or have the willpower to do that it's very hard to change yourself on a deep it's painful as well yeah to deconstruct yourself and put yourself together in a new role and a new personality it's they're usually very karmic relationships that teach you a lot about you at the end you end up very different than how you started the relationship i've seen pluto connections in synastry in composite when they're very powerful eventually even if it doesn't last, you come out of this relationship a different person. And after that, yeah. usually it's in this relationship, maybe you had power struggles with the person. They wanted you to be one way because Pluto wants to transform always. So maybe you wanted your partner to be one way or they wanted you to be one way and it breaks up and then you end, go with the other partner and you become that thing the previous partner wanted. They're like, I always wanted him to be like that. What the <laughs> hell? Now he's doing all the right things with, you know, but maybe this clash slowly deconstructed you there, but you didn't do it for the first partner. And then, but if, if, you know, if you stay together, eventually you can transform into, or oh, the partner can transform. But it's usually there is resentment involved because no one likes it's that the threat of the ego that the ego feels that i'm gonna be changed yeah. and die and it's you lash out and it's like a play of it's a game of of um, ambush and <laughs> prey and a victim <laughs> that power struggles yeah power resentments deep resentment right. can appear uh, but there is also deep obsession and desire towards each other it's very sexual so that's the only thing that keeps those relationships the deep the deep sexual attraction as well and the deep compulsion like you said there is the compulsion part to to work through those issues yeah 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 it's um it, it's a very i mean pluto is very interesting and some people but actually because i've seen clients and they're in such pluto relate relationships and uh, they understand what's happening. Mm -hmm. They know that their partner is checking their phone. They start lying to their partner. They say, he's a very good man. I just won't tell him that I've done this and that and everything's fine. And this is how we live and it's okay. Okay. And like, oh, good. So, so if, when you understand the energies, because I've never been jealous and my Pluto is on my partner's ascendant. <laughs> and suddenly... I like for two, three years, I was checking his phone and it, it's not me. And I was having Pluto transits. I'm still, I'm, but I feel it's, and I realized, okay, we have Pluto sinistry and I have Pluto transits. I'm just, I react only towards him like that. So I need to take a breath <laughs> and I'm learning and I'm, and I haven't checked his phone in uh, a long time. So <laughs> Like no one is, you know, it's even we as an astrologist, we realize those things, but sometimes the compulsion is so strong. But when you know that 
this will make you feel like that this person will, this person will act like that towards you you can have some you don't think you're going mad first of all because everyone triggers different parts of you this person my partner triggers my pluto <laughs> you know on, on it falls on his ascendant and i want to transform him and it, it is not easy but it's um it's an uh, interesting dynamic. And, and I realized that with him, I'll, I'm going to be like that. I'm going to be jealous and I'm going to feel very strong sexual attraction and I'm going to feel obsessiveness towards him. <laughs> and, and, and I kind of try and accept myself for that and I try to tone it down so, you know, he doesn't feel like someone is on top of him all the time. <laughs> and I, I stop myself <laughs> consciously, but... You have to be with such Pluto, Neptune, Uranus. You have to be a conscious person. And then you have to consciously work with that. And um, I guess for every difficult aspect, <laughs> you have to. It, it, it is true. And still, yes. um, still we, are, we are only people. I mean, sometimes, uh, as you said, I mean, we are astrologers. We know how things are. And at the same time, sometimes you just, you just can't, you can't do it. Moment, I mean, we are not... Yeah, at one moment the love goes away and you can't deal this mo anymore with the difficult. Not always, but sometimes the love can go away and then you say, I can't make this effort anymore, this consciously, you know. Yeah, or, or, or the person that is activating this in you, they might get tired while you are trying to better yourself, while you're trying to go through this difficulty because it's a psychological, it's an emotional difficulty that's being triggered and uh they might just uh, not have the patience to wait for you to transform and then things again um fall apart mm -hmm. but uh yeah with i mean watch our previous video on the topics with the heart aspect it's really interesting i think and it's uh, uh, very important to to check your chart and see what things are working between you and your partner so that you can be more conscious and more understanding of each other and working towards using the higher vibrations of these energies rather than uh, sinking into the <laughs> unknown. <laughs> and, and it's hard not to. <laughs> when the, yeah. it's, it's, it's very, I mean, it's very hard not to. It's very, very hard not to. And uh, don't forget that you are just a person with uh, your all your emotions and all your trauma and all the psychological things that you might not be aware of. Um, I don't think we can always. I mean, we can. I don't think we can ever be aware of everything that's no. happening in our minds. It's impossible. But uh, at least if you um, decide that you can work on yourself, you can get better and better. Mm -hmm. And when when someone comes to you and says, "Okay, I'm in these relationships. It's we love it, we in love, but it's complicated. We have issues. Are we gonna break up or future prediction? What is it easy for you to see if someone's gonna break up or no? What what does it I, depend on? I can. I mean, some things are um, sometimes. Some sometimes the situation is such that it's so stressful that depending i mean again i would ask the people what have they been through and what have they done to help each other uh in the relationship but uh, what i have noticed is that sometimes things can get difficult but they can be overcome and sometimes it's near it's close to impossible um for example i have a i have a friend who's uh who has a transit like Uranus is transiting his fourth house, Pluto is opposing his moon, and I don't know, there was some something else um, squaring his Venus or something. I don't know, but it's yeah. it's, like it's everything close to impossible. In gang, every all the planets have ganged up on him, and unless they yeah, have yeah. a very perfect relationship, not perfect, but very no problems in the relationships before. No, they, they, there are problems and when you hear that there are problems and when you see the chart and see how things are um, happening in progressions and in transits and sometimes things are really really hard to 
to go over and even because um my friend is very stubborn so i would imagine that he can go through these things uh and like because of because he's stubborn he can stay in the way he is uh in the relationship but then uh i think this would cost a lot of energy and and, and the feelings are going to be neglected and then they'll come up at some point mm -hmm. again it, mm -hmm. it, and unfortunately sometimes it can be even as when we're talking about the moon it's very important to take care of the moon to take care of the feelings and to recognize them and um work with them because otherwise they can come up as illness if we neglect out how we feel and what mm. we want so mm. it's it's difficult but sometimes for example uh, there might be some uh, hard aspects, but um, if, like, for example, if Saturn is transiting the seventh house cusp, um, there might be some hardship, there might be some difficulties, there might have to be some new order in the relationship and new, new rules, um, um, building boundaries, uh, but it doesn't mean that it will necessarily fall apart. Mm. Um, of course, these are just like you, you with one aspect, you can not just say, okay, you have Saturn on the seventh cusp, that's it, and end of story. <laughs> yeah. yeah, unless they uh, hated each other for years now and they just can't stand each other, well, then Saturn transiting a seventh house cusp might push you. <laughs> yeah. uh, with Jupiter, you can get divorced, you can separate. With Jupiter like transiting, yeah, you know, you're like, ah, <laughs> but Saturn <laughs> might be like, <laughs> actually get you stuck even more there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. With with Jupiter, it just you feel like you are free now and you're happy and you can do whatever you want and you can have all the partners in the world, not <laughs> only one. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Radhi, for taking, giving us some time and uh, sharing with us into your insights. Uh, lovely to have you again on the show. If anyone would like to have a reading with Radhi on relationships, she uses all different methods like synastry composite uh, and, of course, future uh, progressions and transits to see the development. You can contact Radhi. Uh, 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 oh, sorry. Uh, oh my God! We can contact Radhi, and uh, she she has a discount on her composite and and re relationship reading for one hundred and fifty dollars down from two hundred. So thank you so much, Radhi. Have a lovely evening. Thank you very much. It was great pleasure talking to you as usual. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs>